Hi everyone, it's Sheena. Before we begin this week's episode, I have a special message from next week's special guest and one of my first inspirations in this health and wellness industry. Her name is Kimberly Snyder and you'll be hearing more from her next week. Hi everyone, I'm Kimberly Snyder, nutritionist and New York Times bestselling author of Radical Beauty. For those of you listening from New Orleans, I will be in town this Monday for a yoga, meditation, and Q&A event led all by me. If you're anywhere else across the globe, I will also be back here on Raw Talk, so please be sure to tune in. We will be having a very raw conversation about all things beauty related. If you're interested in buying tickets to my event in New Orleans on Monday, please go to my website, KimberlySnyder.com slash events. I look forward to connecting with you soon. You're listening to a fresh new podcast on healing, spiritual development, nutrition, energy work, and sometimes aliens. From the owner of the celebrity acclaimed Raw Republic Juice Bar and Wellness Center in New Orleans, Louisiana, Sheena Manina. Yes, that's her real name. This is Raw Talk with Sheena. Hi, basic witches. We're here. Raw Talk with Sheena this week. Hey, Am. Hey. Are you excited? <laughs> I'm always excited. You guys, um, we have a few updates that need to happen before we get into the meat of the subjects going on in the podcast. Okay. One. Yes. Scientology, the aftermath. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite topic now. Did you see the most recent episode? Uh, when was that? Two nights ago. Two nights ago. So, that, that, no. Correct me if I'm wrong, people, but I believe that this is the first time that Leah mentioned aliens who these people worship. What? Okay, wait. This is the one and only. Whoa, just saw something over your head just now. Was it an alien? I, I don't know. Is it know. Zeno? Zeno coming to get us? Okay, this is creeping me out, though. For real, there was like a being over your head just now. Is it telling me not to talk about this? No, definitely talk about it. Okay. Okay, so um, this is the one episode I haven't seen. I'm going to go home tonight and watch it. Yeah. Yeah. So it was a very insignificant part of the episode. Okay. But you guys, everyone who's been on this journey of Scientology, the aftermath with us, I personally, my interest and my intrigue has been mm -hmm. waiting for the meat of the subjects of what these people believe in that is so yes. enticing. You've been asking me that. I'm like, I don't know. For yeah. them to be paying millions of dollars for this information. Yeah. Okay. So the reason why most Scientologists, I have an alien above my head. Okay. Yeah. It's okay. Keep brief, talking. Brief pause. Amberly is, is operating on zero sleep and I've been working yeah. for 72 hours straight. Yeah. So yep. this entire episode is going to be channeled. Yes. Not to mention we have a psychic that's showing up where we're recording to sleep here. So all of this energy is surrounding us. And it's us. a full moon. It's going to be weird. Yeah. So get weirder. There's the disclaimer for people who don't like it when we jump around. It's probably not the episode for you to tune in. Okay. <laughs> um, Zenu. Yes. I well, okay, they have mentioned Zenu before they in have, one of the episodes, okay. but they didn't elaborate on it at okay. all. Okay, right. so here is the backstory. They are speaking about actually they they very casually just showed a reporter mm -hmm. having reported on Scientology and having interviewed Leah while she was in Scientology. So a reporter okay. So a reporter that they have on Scientology, the aftermath is here, you know, 10 years later right. with Leah mm -hmm. outside of it saying, Leah, I asked you the question, mm -hmm. do you believe in a supreme alien being as your creator godlike figure? Yeah. And she completely denied it. And so she explained that when you are immersed in Scientology, Mm -hmm. you will be fined for disclosing the information that you've been given. This sounds like it is totally part of the, I don't, I don't know if I should even go there because uh, this is treading very, very dark waters, but this sounds very close to the Illuminati. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. I, I think that 
energetically, Scientology, the Illuminati, it's Freemasons. Connected. Yeah, they're mm-hmm. connected. And the part of it that I think is interesting is that as humans, there's only a certain portion of this information that is actually in 3D. Everything mm-hmm. else is relating to energy, is relating right. to other dimensional beings. Mm-hmm. So sh- certainly there have been discoveries about merging the gap between the dimensions, mm-hmm. merging the gap between what a ninth dimensional being is capable of and utilizing and what a third dimensional being is capable mm-hmm. of and utilizing. Right. And some of that information has crossed over. Or they actually have created hybrids of ninth and third dimensional oh, beings. Sure, sure so, definitely. Yeah. And and yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. But what I think that a lot of these organized groups are doing is mm-hmm. they have they have information from other dimensions that they utilize for power and um authority and um movement of energy. Yeah. Through money, through healing, through mm-hmm. whatever. Mind control. Everything. Yeah. Everything. That's very interesting. There is technology involved in Scientology that is very interesting to mm-hmm. these people. They have they have to have seen it with their own eyes. Wait, okay, so what do you mean uh, seen what with their own eyes? I think that they you know, much like, so if you guys are tuning in for the first time, Amberly and I go to energy healing conferences to learn energy healing practices developed by other people. Mm-hmm. We've gone to reconnection and matrix energetics workshops specifically in case you're interested. So at these workshops, we see people, we see energy in a very palpable form. We can feel Mm -hmm. it. We can utilize it. We see it changing people physically. I think that these people have a similar experience in their groups. Right. And so they're very enticed by it. And so they think, well, this, because it does feel like you are connecting to a godlike being. Wait, okay. Or beings. Okay, so they correct me if I'm wrong, they don't believe in like doctors and medicines and things like that, right? Isn't that, that's, before I knew anything about Scientology, I feel like that was the only thing that I knew of that about you, them. Yeah, so they are very well known for not agreeing to mental health diagnoses. Well, I knew I knew that through this, and these psychiatry, episodes. Yeah, right. that they have like, yeah, they're so against that. But I think- Which I actually think is a good part of their message right I mean they take it too far yeah like, they, they like definitely everything like right. you can't sit there and bash another thing in relation to what you're doing which I try to always tread lightly on that because everything works for everyone at any given time yeah. so it's not that anybody else is wrong about anything right. it's their perspective it's their reality and who's to say that I wouldn't utilize that in the future at some point or need it and that might work True. at that point right, right. so but they do go they take it too far and mm-hmm. they're like oh well you know psychiatrists are I think they even said evil or something something along the line of taking it too far right well the way that they speak about it publicly is they mm-hmm. say that there's a natural way through your problems and and right. the, and in relation to what By the they e meter right <laughs> in relation to what Scientologists believe it seems and if there are any Scientologists Scientologists listening to this episode right now and I'm incorrect please reach out to me but what it seems like is they are going down the road of uh only being dependent on their religion. So Mm -hmm. should you have a mental disorder, there's a cure through your religion. Right. It's like a community. Should you have a financial disorder, right? There's a cure through your religion. Should you have marital disorders, everything should, in their opinion, go back mm -hmm. to the church. But their church is also causing financial problems, marital problems. Oh, certainly. <laughs> certainly. Yeah. It's but not. <laughs> it is It is like a compounded 
community that is they shut out the rest of the world. Right. Yeah. So who knows the reason why they've come up with solutions for mental health problems, Mm -hmm. whether to just have an answer to everything or brainwashing tactics. Who knows? You know, like, I guess if you're depressed and they don't have a solution for you, then you may seek outside help, which would might say this may not be a good religion for you to be a part of. Who knows? It's part of the Definitely. control aspect. But, um, but yeah, I actually like, that's probably one of the only things that I agreed with was that they at least advocate having a natural response to mm-hmm. most diagnosis. But I always see the other side with things because... Yeah, I do too. Yeah. I do too. It is something that... But I definitely think that we're over-prescribed and over-medicated. Oh, yeah. For sure. Yeah. There's good and bad to everything. I'll just leave it at that Mm -hmm. because I could go into how, you know, so many other religions have similarities to these aspects, but we're so quick to point it out because it's so extreme in some ways that it points it, it makes it very, um, like a red flag and everyone's like, oh my gosh. But at the same time, it's like, well, we kind of do that to a certain extent in some ways in many religions, you know? So what do you um, mean? Like give options for everything through religion? Well, I mean, even like Jehovah's witnesses, you know, and, and other religions will, um, it kind of, it kind of toes the line of some things where you tell the elders, like you talk to the elders in that religion Mm -hmm. about like your problems Mm -hmm. and they're the ones that you go to for your problems and stuff. And, and you'll even, even like tattle on your own family members to these elders. And you know, it's just, I, I know this cause I know a lot of Jehovah's witnesses, but, um, (laughs) but, uh, so, (laughs) <laughs> yeah, we'll just leave it at that. But um, so there are religions that have similarities to these things, and but they can be viewed differently too. I mean, I don't know. I just feel like religion is such a, a tough subject. But I also look at it as in our country too, which I've told you this before. We're like, we all were joking about, oh, you know, Scientologists, they pay money to move up these levels. And yeah. if they just knew that they didn't have to pay it, you know, it, and they get thrown into this, what is it, the hole or something? Mm-hmm. If they like don't do that and, and it's all like consequences and everything. Yeah. I'm like, okay, well, if you think about it, if we don't pay our taxes, yeah, they're going to throw us in jail. It's like, yeah. it's so similar. And we're like, they're so brainwashed. Why would you do that? Yeah. The power is always in the people. Yeah. So if everyone decided one day to not pay their taxes. Yeah. Tough shit. Right. Like you can't throw the whole country right. in jail. Right. It's not going to so happen. So you're just seeing the similarities in this religion. Brainwashing throughout the all, world. all over the world. There are. It's giving up your power to other absolutely people. Absolutely. Yeah. Right in the way that we for nothing too so many things I mean we do I grew up Catholic so I remember my parents really I I I remember very few things about church because it's never something that I've connected with right but I do remember my parents feeling like their life was better if they gave money to the church Mm mm-hmm and I think it's because the church put that idea into their mind. And when mm-hmm. I, I look at that from a business perspective, it's a really smart marketing oh, no. tool. It is. <laughs> to make people feel like the more money you give, the better your life is. Yeah. Well, it is kind of like investing in something that you believe in. So people right. invest in things that they believe in. Right. So that could be anything. It could be a business. Like, right. Like, Raw Republic yeah. or it could be yeah. you know anything that you believe in and, and you want to put money towards because that's showing you're supporting them with your yes. energy yes so and um, I like that yeah. but I want the I want the channels to just be clearer yeah 
You know, like why aren't, right. why don't we say everything? Why don't right. we, like, can you donate to our church because we're poor as F and we want to keep this going, this <laughs> right. thing going, you yeah. know, yeah. like don't play it as a mind control type of thing where it's like, Oh, or just, like, you know, pass you know the basket. let's be a part of this church, right. which we want to have like marble, um, everywhere. We want our priests to be right. taken care of. Like right. we want them to live in better places and have better cars. Like, exactly. Let's just be honest and real, real about it. Not everyone is is raw talk with Sheena. Okay. I guess not, not everyone's raw like we are. This is the thing. <laughs> Most people in authoritative positions don't believe that people deserve all the information because they think that when they give people the information, they are losing their power. It, it makes them vulnerable. They feel like because, makes them vulnerable yeah. and mm-hmm. they're sharing their power. Yeah. And they're afraid that if they share information, mm-hmm. they will put people on the same playing field and that they may lose their power through that mm-hmm. transaction. Yeah. And so they keep secrets. That is a really good point because you can... Our pizza's here. Okay. <laughs> okay. Pause for a moment. <laughs> I'm not... We can pause. Hold on. Okay. We need to eat, people. We haven't eaten all day or slept. Hold on. <laughs> oh, my God. This is so good. Okay, we're back. Okay. That was good. It was good. We ate and, and then we came back. I feel well nourished. Good. Shout out to the grapefruit juice at Raw Republic for saving my life. And Pizza Dominica. Yes. Because we ate that too. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, yep. back to Scientology. <laughs> <laughs> and Xenu. <laughs> we have to, I mean, this is like, I understand that this is weird, but I also can't imagine my life without having these conversations. Can you imagine if you lived a life and you didn't really think about anything beyond our world. Well, we're so distracted these days with especially social social media, but work and just everything around you. It's it's like impossible to connect, and I feel like there's a reason why they don't want us to connect. Of course. Definitely. I agree. Because then we start asking questions like I'm sorry. Who am I? Where am I coming from? Well, who's what's Zinu? my purpose? Yeah. What's my purpose in life? Zinu, and, are you there? And then Plans? you're not a, right. And then you're not a slave to society. Yeah. Because you start asking questions and start asking questions about everything that you do and start becoming more empowered, more informed. Yeah. More passionate about your life. Mm-hmm. Healthier. Yeah. And then you don't give up your money or your freedom to anybody, and that's no fun. This reminds me of a documentary that I've seen. It's called Thrive. I've never seen it. I don't think that you have. Why does it sound familiar? Have you told me about this before? I may have. I don't know. This documentary was created by one of... God, there are two options. It's either the Proctor, a, a son of Proctor and Gamble or a son of Johnson and Johnson. I can't remember. Wait, okay, this is a... what? Thrive it's a documentary. A documentary. Yes, okay. but it's self-funded by a son of, of one of these families where he invested all of his personal money into the investigation and the uh, research behind this documentary. And it basically completely takes you out of the way that you live in society and, and forces you to ask questions. It's the first time that I questioned who I banked with, where I bought groceries from, what type of groceries I bought, like what monster are you feeding by your decisions? Mm -hmm. It was the first time that I began questioning that was when I saw this documentary, probably like seven, maybe five years ago. Wow. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. That's very interesting. Yeah, because you are supporting somebody with your dollars. So... Everyone always thinks it's like politics that's going to make the changes, but you have all of the power that you need. You yeah. always have all of the power yeah. by every single choice that you make. Right. It's not just like you said dollars. Mm-hmm. It's, a, it's actually like what you choose to watch, what that you too. choose to read, mm-hmm. what you choose to think about. You're energetically yeah. putting information into the world. Yeah. It's everything. But... And I feel like that's why there's so much hustle and bustle and disconnection from that because when you're connected, you realize you have everything that you need Mm -hmm. within you. Like you have all of the knowledge, you have all of the power to do everything and anything that you want. But you can say that, but 
I don't have everything that I want. Even though I've felt, I've felt connected, mm -hmm. I still want more information. I still want more connection. Well, because you're still living in a society where yeah. you're constantly being disconnected at any chance that the society gets. Yeah. So you're, trying to balance these two worlds of being connected and being disconnected. So yes, you have moments of deep, deep connection where, you, you know, it's meditation, inspiration, all that good stuff. And then you get on social media or you flip through your Instagram or oh, heaven forbid you're on Twitter. No, mm -hmm. um, but Twitter's cool. <laughs> shout out to Steve. Um, every but, episode. I know every episode. God. He's our like super fan. Actually, you're a super fan of him. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. yeah. So you're still balancing these two worlds. So you're not going to be perfectly connected and everything's bliss and, you know, yada, yada. You're still working through it. We're only just now getting into an age where we are able to even speak of this kind of stuff. Yeah. You know, so mm -hmm. w because we've become so disconnected. So now that we're reconnecting, to you think that we're going to be closer to utilizing that information for we're getting there the betterment of our life yes yeah i think that a lot of people are there i think that and without knowing it definitely but something like this which has been wonderful like this podcast has been wonderful for people to say oh you know what i've thought of that before but they've never had the courage to speak about it out loud to their friends mm -hmm. or family members or to act on it or to act on it on yeah. this new like source of inspiration exactly yeah, so I feel like more and more things are going to start. And the more people aren't afraid to talk about this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. You know when you reveal something like that to somebody you're really close to, say it's like, oh, you know what's so weird? I do such and such. And then your friend's like, oh, my God, me too. So I, so do I. I do that all the time. And then you're like, wow, I'm not as much of a freak. Well, mm -hmm. maybe it's just us two because yeah. we're both freaks. Yeah. I've never had that experience <laughs> with anyone but you. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> there's never maybe. been someone where I'm like, uh, I practice this thing called like energy healing. And I talk about these things like, yeah, they but might you be know aliens. What? It took me talking about it to you because you didn't, you weren't exposed to this kind of stuff. You weren't practicing energy. I wasn't work. practicing. Right before I started talking, talking to you about yeah. aliens. Right. That was the, Thing that just blew it all up for right. us. I was like, I'm going to tell her about aliens. Right. And then we were like, <laughs> hearts for eyes for the rest of our lives. <laughs> we're the only people who can talk about aliens to yeah. one another. But I was inspired to talk to you about that. I, I, I never talk about aliens to my friends. And I didn't even know only you. Only to all of you. Only to, <laughs> only to all our, my best friends. Our real true friends <laughs> yeah. out there. Yeah. My tribe. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, um, but yeah, I didn't even know you and I, I just was inspired to say it. And I was like, well, I have literally nothing to lose because we're not friends at this point. <laughs> so she's either going to love me or be like, this girl's a free. This is the thing. I both. never have a filter. So I would, I am willing. I think you do. You do? Sometimes. Really? Yeah. See, like if I, if I want to say something, I usually say it. But that's because you're inspired to say it. A lot of people shut down that inspiration and inhibit themselves because they're self-judging. I would never not but you don't talk to someone about something that I believe in. That's incredible because not many people can do that. I'm not afraid of, of that. I'm not afraid of being perceived as strange. I have become more like that. You've inspired me to do that. <laughs> oh. Although I have been way more verbally expressive about my weirdness mm -hmm. more than the average person. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. But you have helped me embrace. That's what I mean by I don't really feel like that. I have a filter. Yeah. You probe. I just like, I'm just, you probe people. Yeah. I, I, I do. I find that there is some sort of a fault in me in wanting to make people feel comfortable. So maybe the inspiration to speak about certain things won't come if I'm in front of certain people, but I would never deny the way that what I believe to be true at a particular time. You know what I notice that you do? What? Because you connect with people, <laughs> you know exactly how to connect with them. Mm -hmm. I recognize this in you immediately when mm -hmm. we first mm -hmm. had dinner together. I was like, this girl is 
so it's not manipulative at all. It's a genuine interest in needing to connect with other people. Yeah. And you were the first person, like my age group, who's not part of my family, mm-hmm. that um, who really connected with trying to get information out of me. I'm always that person. So I was seeing it in you and I was like, gosh, this girl is not letting me off the hook because I kept wanting to turn it around on you and be like, well, I want to <laughs> know about her. Like, mm-hmm. well, I don't, I feel vulnerable. Yeah. Revealing. Yeah. Everything to this mm-hmm. person that I don't even know. Yeah. And you kept asking more questions and more questions and more qu- and you were genuinely excited and yeah. wanted to know more. And it was not manipulative by any means, but I was like, God dang it. Like this girl won't let up. She keeps digging more and more and more. And mm-hmm. I'm like, let me, every time I asked you a question, you would turn it right back around on me. And you're like, <laughs> yeah, well, um, blah, blah, blah. But what about you? Like yeah. you would turn, turn it back immediately. Because like, I wasn't done with I the do. conversation. Yeah. Because this is the thing. And this is what I've said. I have no talent other than <laughs> to look at someone and to see something beyond their physical form. Yes. And so Mm -hmm. as a healer, as a friend, as whatever, it's very easy for me to see someone and Mm -hmm. see like there's something in your energetic field that you're not talking about. But if if I can just get you to say it, Mm -hmm. we can clear it and you don't have to deal with it anymore. Yeah. So that's usually my inspiration because I see a lot of people holding on to a lot of shit Mm -hmm. and just like going through life not fully expressing who they are but because of fear or because of past trauma or mm-hmm. because of because of belief systems or because of patterns that are being passed down ancestrally right. mm-hmm. so i think a lot of my inspiration comes from like making someone else question like because when someone says something then they obviously that's their truth and mm-hmm. so if they have to say something then they have to recognize that they that has been their truth for a while and right. so if they say it oftentimes they can heal it and clear it mm-hmm. speaking but, of the psychic yeah. just arrived at Raw republic so i have to go let her in okay we'll pause it again <laughs> and we're back with part three <laughs> so hello again We've never taken breaks. We've taken never. two breaks during this podcast. I know. So, um, and it's a full moon. So, and it's a full moon. Everything feels crazy. Nothing feels yeah linear. Laura Which Powers is, is walking around the space. <laughs> we'll hear from her later on this week. And so, yeah, we're we're all excited. All of us little basic witches are talking about our psychic capabilities and our capacity to see people's energy and frequencies and things like that. So. Um, what are you telling me to talk into the microphone? <laughs> you're holding, I don't know. I, Can you hear fine. me? You're fine. You're fine. You were just fixing the pen and the mic was <laughs> to the side. <laughs> you're fine. <laughs> anyway, um, I had a topic for today. So okay. we're getting into it. Um, <laughs> oh, wow. Slow but sure. Yep. <laughs> so today we're going to talk more about something physical because I think that. Can your brain work? Feel, yeah, right now, feel, this, this grapefruit juice is really helping okay, a lot. Okay, good. So we have been requested to talk about specifically skin disorders, mm. psoriasis and eczema particularly. Wow. I didn't know that. I never know. <laughs> you sure didn't. <laughs> I know. I was like, wait, we're starting out with Scientology. We're getting into like connecting <laughs> with friends over dinner and what makes them vulnerable. This and- is part three. Of episode yeah. 29. This feels like <laughs> day three in my life, too. I've been up for 32 hours. Yeah. You're doing great. I'm killing it. You're doing a great job. <laughs> so this doesn't have to be a logical explanation. Okay, perfect. But if someone were coming to you for nutritional advice regarding mm-hmm. skin conditions, yeah, which if, if you guys are not familiar with eczema and psoriasis, they're basically skin breakouts that are appear to be dry skin, dry flaky skin. And they can be in a variety of places. I think that they're very similar. Sometimes they're itchy conditions and sometimes they are just um, dry flaky skin. And yeah, Kim that's Kardashian all. has psoriasis and that's why people know what it is. Yeah, a lot of... A yes, lot of, and Stassi has dealt Stassi with um, psoriasis. Yeah. Said, yeah, so... Um, Which her psoriasis... So this is a very just 
traditional way of dealing with psoriasis. The way that Stasi healed hers actually was by discontinuing using a lot of um, traditional skin products. Mm -hmm. So she stopped using a lot of soaps on her skin. Mm -hmm. She takes off her makeup with a rag now, mm -hmm. which I talk about the magic mitt all the time. Jane Iredale, you better pay me a commission on this. <laughs> I talk about the magic mitt on Facebook live videos on this podcast really all the is. time. It's one of the best products. It is magical. It's just I love it so a much. thin microfiber cloth that mm -hmm. takes off all of your makeup with water. So you need to use nothing. Yeah. And it like naturally exfoliates too it's it like, naturally it's exfoliates so and you amazing. don't have to use like i want to use expensive high vibrational amazing skin products mm -hmm. that are made with essential oils and all yes. that like that's not something that you want to douse a rag in to take off your makeup right that's an expensive product that you mm -hmm. want to use as like a serum or a healing mm -hmm. treatment or um moisturizer or whatever but not whatever mm -hmm. not in the sense of like taking off your makeup so right yeah if you wanted a quick solution look at what you're putting on your skin uh-huh that that's very good and eliminate as much as possible in the um what is it S L S category sodium mm -hmm. laurel sulfate, sulfate yeah. which causes a lot of skin problems mm-hmm that's very true. That's in most of your basic witches shower right now. And I know it <laughs> factually. I know it because we're basics too. <laughs> and we're psychic. So it's definitely <laughs> in your shampoo. It's most likely in your conditioner. It's probably in Hide your, your, wife. Hide in your, your really expensive face wash from your dermatologist. Yeah. It's most likely in your, it could be in your toothpaste. Um, it can be in all of your facial creams. It's hiding in your closet. And <laughs> sodium laurel sulfite or whatever the F, like these are all derivatives yeah, all of derivatives. the same thing. Right. So if Still it looks, that. if it starts with an S and ends with an M and has an L in it <laughs> and you can't pronounce high. it. Yeah. Yeah. Be a little concerned. <laughs> Question the Everything. validity yeah. of what you're seeing, even though it's described as being natural. Right. So mm -hmm. that's my two cents. What would you tell people? Nutritionally? Yes. Okay. So first and foremost, anything like that, an inflammatory response is, I always go to an immune system. Your immune system is compromised in some way. So um, look at things that are inflammatory in your life that you may be eating or consuming or uh, like you said, rubbing on your body topically mm -hmm. or being exposed to that would cause an inflammatory response. So um, that's physically, I would work on that. There are also emotions attached to that as mm -hmm. well and experiences and trauma and different things like that. So Okay, so um, you, you're saying first you have first a compromised immune system, immune yeah. system due to... Due to toxic overload, basically. Yes. So, which is coming from? Well, it could be a lack of nu nutrient dense foods. Okay, a lack of. So it could also be. It could an influx also be of an influx processed foods, definitely, okay. or like too many um, drive-through runs, or mm -hmm. you know something like that, something containing a lot of, um, processing or, or just not very nutrient dense. Mm -hmm. So all of that compromises the immune system. So the immune system is like a thermostat. So it registers when something needs to um, kick in or, mm -hmm. um, or yeah, kick in the cellular growth or different things like that. So the immune system is also responsible for candida growth. So mm -hmm. candida is good. You know, certain things are good. Cellular growth is good. We need all those things, but when it's in excess, that's like when it an becomes excessive amount, that's when it becomes inflammatory. Candida overgrowth. Right. Then or you have cancer. Right. Exactly. Okay. So I'll, I know we always say this birth control is one of those things that, you know, anything that raises estrogen levels, mm -hmm. and this can be in, in both men and women, anything that raises estrogen levels. Okay. I know y'all are going to hate me, but wine <laughs> and alcohol is yeah. a huge one. Right. So that turns on estrogen res um, hormones. In, so in how the body. much are so you drinking basic witches? A lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think that you're probably drinking too much too. Yeah. If I could guess. Okay. So, we're now on to we've connected another portion to this, which is estrogen. 
Right. Mm-hmm. Okay. And estrogen is Est- inflammatory, estrogen comes stressful. from toxins. And yeah, because these are not. This is not a natural form of estrogen, correct? Well, okay, this all goes goes to yeah. No, it's not. What? Well, wait. What do you so mean? Can you clarify like, from birth control um, or? Okay, so okay, so I will sin- clarify. Okay, so the liver is responsible for manufacturing hormones. Mm-hmm. So, if the liver is too busy trying to detoxify pharmaceutical medications, alcohol. Um, shampoo that you're exposing yourself to, you know, all these chemicals that are in everything and, mm-hmm. and it's toxin overload. Say your so your liver is compromised at that point. So, and it's also responsible for detoxifying estrogen. Mm-hmm. So too much estrogen, getting rid of that and balancing the hormones. Mm-hmm. So, why, if, But why would someone have too much estrogen? A lot of reasons. Most stress. Okay. Stress. We'll just Chalk it up to stress. Okay. So, um, but it also estrogen is the the type of hormone that um, that is destructive or or sheds. Okay. And progesterone is a youth associated hormone that um, if your body is in a restful state, it can produce progesterone. Okay. Which is what makes your hair grow long, um, your your skin look awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's like prenatal vitamins. It's progesterone so that is the also what makes you fertile as well progesterone so um (laughs) but you need a balance of of everything it's not that estrogen is bad it's just a lot of the time there are so many things perfumes especially out there just are hormone disruptors um laundry detergent all that kind of stuff so take inventory hold on sister for the love okay (laughs) i'm trying to write this down and you're talking to me i'm i'm writing it it doesn't matter no but but I'm, I I want to I just want to connect the parts because I actually do want to understand. So the details are not important. They're not important, but I do want to understand. I'm getting to it. Okay. okay. Perfume. What was the other thing? Laundry detergent. detergent. These are just examples. Yeah, but I like to know. Okay. <laughs> uh, well, actually, a huge irritant, which can cause asthma and a whole host of problems, are fabric softeners. Or, yeah. or um, those sheets, dryer sheets. Yeah, people like those are very upgrade to irrit- wool irrit- dryers. Yeah, dryer balls and use vinegar as a fabric softener. Mm-hmm. That's good. There are many simple swaps. Okay, so okay. Anything that is um, toxic to the body or. Mm-hmm. Um, Inflammatory. inflammatory, all of that irritating puts the body in a state of stress. Yeah. So when your body is in a state of stress, it can't have a baby. Mm-hmm. So all of those, um, you know, your rest and ju- digest system, your mm-hmm. parasympathetic nervous mm-hmm. system where you're resting and digesting. Mm-hmm. So your reproductive system will shut down yeah. and your digestion, which a lot of people are constipated and um, can't get pregnant. So that or they have you. irregular periods. Or irregular periods. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a huge one. So this is all due to stress. So when your body is in a state of rest, it can the liver can relax a little bit, mm-hmm. produce the hormones that it needs to produce, mm-hmm. and not be so tied up in trying to detox everything from your body. So a lot of the time people say, um, oh, the, the poison is in the dose. But if you're exposing yourself to these little bits of compounding um, effect right yeah. it's over time your liver can't like why put that stress on your body that's premature aging and that don't put the stress on your body to begin with well this is the thing even if you can handle it most people are unaware that all of these things are toxins most people or stressors yeah don't mm-hmm. or stressors yeah or are causing irritation or inflammation. Most people right. don't know that by taking a shower, they can harm themselves mm-hmm. or That's heal themselves. True. Right. Right. So, and it's not just taking a shower. It's cleaning your house. It's doing your laundry. It's yeah. washing your hair. Mm-hmm. It's washing your face. It's putting lotion makeup. on your body. Yeah. It's putting makeup on your body. Mm-hmm. It's mm. all, all those things that contain harmful, harsh chemicals mm-hmm. yes mm-hmm. things that should be banned in conjunction with most likely a stressful lifestyle absolutely which everyone stressful relationships work 
um, finances. It's an unnatural state of work. Right. So we are Your just. Your food is we're, subpar. We're overloaded from a place that is not just physical. Right. It's emotional. It's energetic. It's spiritual. It's everything. Mm-hmm. It's mental. Right. And then you try to numb all that stress with alcohol and drugs and that's over More that's toxins. taxing your liver as well right okay so we have an a, a liver that cannot detoxify fast enough right to or, to prevent our bodies from being exposed to this toxicity mm-hmm. from mm-hmm. our food and yeah. all these things in our atmosphere right think about Wait, how, we're not even talking about our atmosphere we, right. we've only just talked about what's in our house yeah Let's we haven't really talked about into I mean, the air supply right. and the water supply it's, yeah it's incredibly important Mm -hmm. that we clean out what's inside of our Mm -hmm. house because we don't even know what we're exposed to right through Mm -hmm. our air and water supply yeah it's true that's a whole nother podcast for for that um but yeah so basically your body it has is experiencing a chronic stress response Mm -hmm. it has no break for the body to repair itself okay so and on top of that we're exercising, which is another stressor. Mm-hmm. You know, we're not taking time for ourselves to to relax. So, or some of us are not exercising at all, and that's still a stressor. Yeah. So, because you're not moving the energy, it becomes stagnant. So, there's that as well. But, <laughs> so, getting to the, the root of the problem of skin issues. So, if your liver is not able to detoxify those things, mm-hmm. the immune system is compromised. So all of the communication patterns get, get messed up. The wires are crossed and the immune system doesn't know when to tell the body, stop producing skin cells. So it's lost its compass. It Mm -hmm. it has no idea because everything is running awry. It's gone awry. And at this point, it's probably not just overproducing skin cells, right? Right. There are so many other factors going on there. There, it could be, um, a deficiency in a hormone. It could be, um, you know, just so many things are like running through my head. It could be a lot. So mm-hmm. a lot of factors play into it. Are there usual? Is there usually another factor that's associated generally with a skin condition? Like if your skin is erupting with psoriasis mm-hmm. or eczema, mm-hmm. most likely some. Like give it's me another gut, example of something else that's so happening. So gut bacteria. Okay. Is a huge thing. Usually your gut's out of balance if your skin right. is reacting. Yes. At this point. Right. Yeah. Okay. So your um, your gut actually has brain cells in it. So it, it contains neurons, more brain cells in your gut than in your actual brain. Mm-hmm. So I know everyone says, go with your gut. But in reality, you do think with your gut. So, um, so if you have, well, energetically toxic thoughts, that feeds into the gut as mm-hmm. well. This is, this is also at the root of depression and bipolar disorder and all mm-hmm. that kind of stuff too. So, um, so the gut bacteria is very important. So if you can eat nutrient dense foods, especially carrots with coconut oil and sea salt, that's a huge detoxifying agent and it breeds good bacteria in the gut to, mm-hmm. to balance out that, um, I don't know what to call it, biosphere, whatever it's called. Um, to to balance that chemistry out so everything there's Microbiome. a theme here yeah some yeah i think that's what i'm trying to think of um you probably just wrote a book on this so, so, yeah i don't know <laughs> my brain is like fried but um there the, the theme is um oh gosh now i lost it wait what was what was it gut imbalance yeah uh, yeah the theme is that the wires are crossed and things are not Um, things are being, they can't be repaired. Well, it's too much. So it's too many toxins, too much stress, too much this, too much that it's, it's an overgrowth of this. It's a, you know, it's not being balanced. You're not reaching homeostasis. Your your body is fighting instead of repairing. Right. So you're in a, in this constant battle mode Mm -hmm. where if you just rest, you can repair, Mm -hmm. but you're supposed to repair your body through food, rest, and water. Mm -hmm. Those three things have become toxic to us. Rest, people are taking sleeping pills. Mm -hmm. So those are toxins you're, you're putting into your body. Mm -hmm. They can't rest. Their thoughts are all over the place. They're thinking about work. They're thinking about, you know, all those stressors. 
they can't sleep, so they're not repairing. Um, and if they do use a pill to actually sleep, they're not actually resting. They're just sleeping. Mm -hmm. So the body can't repair under those conditions. Nutrition has become a stressor. Mm -hmm. You can't, I mean, instead of your, your food being restorative, it's become totally, yeah. um, and, just, even, and let's just, I mean, like, even if you, you know, cleared all those things out mm -hmm. and you ate really healthfully and things like that, like, how are you showing up for the next day? It, it has to become, there has to become components of your life that are adding in beneficial, um, I, I look at it as like energy, energetic components mm -hmm. to a balanced state. Yeah. So, you know, you may eat really healthy on the weekends or, and work out on the weekends and feel like a warrior, but beginning on Sundays at 8 p.m., you start freaking out about mm -hmm. work mm -hmm. and the entirety of the week is spent on freaking out internally at yeah. work, which means, A, you're not accomplishing more, mm -hmm. and B, you're continuing to stress out your body. You're really not going to get ahead until the major aspects of your life really, you take a, a looking at mm -hmm. and reorganize or reprioritize the way that you approach those major portions of your life right that's true I was just thinking can I say what was just coming into my of course head? <laughs> I don't know why this popped into my head maybe it's just inspired I feel like we should have like a four to five hour or I mean sorry three to four hour work day mm -hmm. and then and only do what's necessary yeah like so often because we have like what is it a seven hour work 40 hour work week yeah half that time is spent doing ridiculous things mm -hmm. that you're just ex expending so much energy doing this and marketing that and doing it it's not necessary it's not necessary to actually get to the crux of what the business is for mm -hmm. and if people really just focused on what is necessary they would only need to work like three to four hours a week and then I mean a day and then you would have so much time to actually spend on connecting with yourself connecting Duh. with other people like and your a life would out be, to every CEO right that it's really not sustainable to no expect people to work 40 hour work weeks and to be efficient you right. essentially are paying you people to be break. inefficient yes you're wasting to just sit money. there yeah to keep mm -hmm. them trapped so that you have the peace of mind i guess that someone's there in case you need something yeah, but yeah I this, feel like this can go into like i know so, so many, many things, directions but it, it just popped in my head that i don't know why i needed to say that but i mean anyway. it's it's unnatural the way that we mm -hmm. force children to sit in a classroom all day as well because right, it's preparing them for the work world <laughs> basically a system a system yeah. to a system yeah 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 Going all the way back to where, no wonder why where we, we need started. a shit ton of Adderall. Yeah. Guess what? If if somebody put me in a classroom today for nine hours, oh my gosh, I would injure myself. <laughs> I would throw myself into walls. Oh my God. I'm positive. Like <laughs> I know you would. You would. You definitely would. It I wouldn't know. be a good thing. <laughs> Jail would be better because at least I could meditate. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's so true. Oh, you're right. And and yet we we are so quick to judge people who are we're so quick to judge children who are 18 years old who are like, you know, he's one of the troubled ones. He's he's been drinking and skipping school and Yeah. Well, he has a soul and a spirit that is pulling him in so many different directions mm -hmm. and has been for 18 years mm -hmm. that because that's not, no one's ever asked him, what would you like to do? What right. are you interested in today? It's not an Do you want to learn something that that's that. like that not taught here? Yeah. No one's ever asked that kid right. that question. Mm -hmm. And so he is busting out at the seams mm -hmm. to just numb the fact that he is an inspired creature right. that wants to do all of this in the world, but doesn't have an outlet. Yep. It's very true. That happens okay, so often. We really, we really screwed up. I know the focused part I know, of this I'm sorry. podcast. Well, back to your skin health. <laughs> back to your skin health. Uh, and gut bacteria and thoughts and emotions yeah. and all that so, good stuff. So, 
if someone is suffering from skin disorder, psoriasis, eczema, and I mean, this is the same for acne and, uh-huh. and things like that. Wrinkles. Yeah. Age, everything that's, that's aging or skin mm-hmm. erupting or anything. Stress. Is the first thing the that you would say for them to look at would be stress. I, yeah, I would say. The stressors. What are your biggest stressors, first and foremost? Mm-hmm. Um, and if those aren't able to be modified in any way, mm-hmm. then look at the little things that you do have control over. Everything like, can be modified. Okay. So, get, a, get a life coach. If, if you're... Yeah. If your job get is... Get a life. <laughs> I thought that's what you were saying. If your job yeah. is the number one stressor... Yeah. Quit. <laughs> leave your profession. Yeah. <laughs> no, you can find a good life coach or a good therapist who can help you or you can pray mm-hmm. and ask to see something from another perspective. Right. How is it serving you? In a good way. <laughs> what? It could be serving you. Like, <laughs> oh, if, exactly. If, exactly. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> Like, I mean, am I going nuts here? The most normal thing I said all the whole podcast, you're like, what in the world? (laughs) All the other weird stuff. You're like, oh yeah, that's normal. (laughs) Oh gosh. Yeah. So if it's, how is it serving you? So even if it's a terrible situation, what's the lesson in it? What can you, what are you getting out of it? Maybe it is, um, you know, fostering a new side of you that you didn't know you were capable of, that mm-hmm. you're going to use it as a stepping stone and get to the next job or, yes. you know, yada, yada. Whatever. Yes. So there are ways to look at things, to change your perceptions, to change the way that your body reacts in certain situations. And some things mm-hmm. cannot be fixed that way. And a good life coach and a good therapist would just tell you to go ahead and leave. Right. And that's fine too. But so I don't want this message to be overwhelming in a sense that your skin is, but I mean, it is a big messenger. If your you, skin is the largest organ in your body. <laughs> you can't help it with the facts. I can't. I'm sorry. <laughs> I was just saying it's for it to reach the point of psoriasis or eczema. It's a very external messenger of oh, yeah. what is internally happening. And that inflammation, the more yeah. that you avoid it, mm-hmm. the further down the road of What's the opposite of health? Disease. Disease. You'll be traveling. <laughs> what else? Disharmony. Yes. Um, dissonance. Dissonance. Instead of resonance. Yeah. Yeah. So not the further away from health you will travel if you avoid these messengers, which are right, sending you a message. Yes. And it's your body's loving way of saying, hey... Pay attention to me. Yes. You're neglecting something. Yes. And continuing to do the same thing over and over again, yes. expecting a different result yes. is the definition of insanity. And it never works. And most likely you have been given other messages before, mm-hmm. before your the skin big ones. starts right. erupting. Yes. Yeah. That is. And a lot of. Um, so psoriasis, I'm just saying, don't take it lightly. Right. Well, a lot of psoriasis. Um, well, the root of psoriasis a lot of the time is rooted in emotional stress and trauma. So it could be, um, you know, a child going through a divorce family or, you know, a bad breakup Mm -hmm. or you move away to college and you don't have any friends at first and you're all alone for the first time in your life. That Mm -hmm. is a trigger Mm -hmm. for something like that to blow up. Yes. So, and that happens a lot with, mental things too. It could be OCD starts manifesting Mm -hmm. or, you know, different things like that where you're trying to gain balance and control in your life and it's out of control. So sometimes what you need to do is just rest Mm -hmm. in every single aspect. Pull yourself out of the situation and look at it for what it is. Mm -hmm. And, gather information about what's going on in your life. Like you said, like look at this as a sign that something needs to change. What is the first thing that pops in your head that would need to change Mm -hmm. at that point? Mm -hmm. That's usually what it is. Yeah. So, and say it is like, okay, well, yeah, my mom and dad got divorced and you know, that's when it triggered Mm -hmm. the psoriasis issue. Mm -hmm. So how do I, how do I change that? Start taking 
little actions. Mm -hmm. So it well, could first be. of all, the first step is looking at it. I know you're <laughs> you're going down a route, <laughs> but the first step is awareness, right? And once you bring awareness to a situation, you can then begin to take, heal it. Take action. Yeah. yeah. So a good starting point is doing the small things. So mm -hmm. maybe it is you start with changing your shampoo or body wash or changing your face wash, um, drinking cleaner water, getting a filter on your shower, um, not drinking as much. I know that's, you know, that's not going to happen for Stassi. Yeah. <laughs> Stassi's like, I'll take the psoriasis. <laughs> you know, Stassi has not diminished the amount that she drinks, mm -hmm. but I can tell you she, she started having psoriasis when she was in a critical point in her relationship where the mm -hmm. relationship was becoming stressful because there was obviously something that needed to be done that mm -hmm. wasn't being done. Wasn't her last outbreak when I did energy work on her? Was that when she... I don't remember if she had it when that? you were there. No, she didn't have it when I was there. But I thought you said she hadn't had it since energy work or something. Um, yeah, no. But anyway. Actually, when it's... Yeah. It <laughs> cleared up when they broke up. Oh, okay. Well, then there's that. Completely. Yeah. And, and I don't know if she's so, yeah, really stress. made the connection. But yes, I think that that was a stressful situation for her because, mm -hmm. and not, not saying that Patrick is a bad person or that it was a terrible no, relationship. It was just not yeah. the relationship that was, that needed to be at that time. At that time. Right. Mm -hmm. So, um, so any kind of stressful event like that can trigger those inflammatory responses in the body. Yeah. So eliminate or modify stressors. Look as at much it, as possible. begin healing it, talk yeah. to someone about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That would be a good way to start. Um, and nutritionally speaking, mm -hmm. carrots, root vegetables, fruit, all those things, nutrient yeah. dense foods will help. My hunch is that if you are dealing with a skin disorder and you show up for a life coaching session or a therapy session with someone, mm -hmm. you, and you begin talking, you are going to want to cry. And you probably will cry. And it's because mm -hmm. you have been avoiding a, a lot mm -hmm. that is a part of you that wants to be expressed mm -hmm. so that it can be processed. Yep. Expressing something does not make it true. It makes it true for you at that time. Mm -hmm. But it also makes it true that that can be released. Be released. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It is a lot of our... Well, all of our organs will store emotions. So I actually talk about this in my Back to Basics course. But if you have a, um, an organ or say you have a traumatic experience, a certain organ will play out that experience over and over again because it has cellular memory. So when that happens, it, and it's a lower vibrational event, what, meaning like say negative emotions are attached to it, which, um, vibrate very slowly. Mm -hmm. Um, you're living in time and space. So you're, you're vibrating at a certain level. If that organ is vibrating at a lower vibrational level, it slows down. So it's living in the past. Yeah. So when Ooh, that that's insightful, Amberly. I know. So that organ system is living in the past, mm -hmm. replaying it over and over again. And that's when dysfunction starts setting in and then eventual disease patterns start playing out because it's living in a certain time continuum that is not in resonance with the time continuum that you're experiencing in everywhere else in your body. So if you can bring it up to a higher vibrational state through energy work, high vibrational foods, nutrient dense foods, um, supplementation, you know, clean water, all these things that are high vibrational things, the disease and dysfunction can disappear because <sighs> it raises the vibration of it. That's how energy works. Amazing. Yeah. So <laughs> I want to, I too. want you to repeat that. Okay. <laughs> Let me no, roll up just, my the, just the last, <laughs> just the last sentence. <laughs> okay. That's how energy works. Yeah, so energy works <laughs> if an organ system is, is living in the past. This is why it made me laugh. I didn't really want you to repeat the whole thing. But okay, I just thought it was funny that you said that's how energy works. 
It does. But energy healing works. You know? What we do is energy work. Well, ener- <laughs> I know, but energy... Okay, I'm so confused about what you're trying to say. But energy works in the way... I mean, everything's energy. <laughs> what are you getting at? Energy work. I know. And that's how energy works. Energy healing work. Yeah, that's, that's the point I was making. Energy work. Works I'm laughing in that way. at something that I don't know. I don't <laughs> know what, what you're laughing at. You don't know what you're laughing at either. No. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So anything Not that sure. is a high vibration, it could be an energy healing session, bringing yes. light and information I to an organ. Exactly what you said. A food. But I do think it was so significant. It was a really eloquent way of putting it and explaining Thank it. You. All of that good stuff is in my course. So yeah. Yeah, definitely. Everyone should buy the yeah. Back to Basics course to yeah. get on par with what you need to be eating. Um, and not in an, a restrictive way, but just in a very loving and healing way. Mm-hmm. The course is beautiful and everyone should have it as Thank part you. of their toolbox. Thanks for healing and health, well-being yeah. in 2017. And life. It's hashtag this is not a diet. I was just about to hashtag. I was going to say just hashtag life. But it's not <laughs> L-Y-F-E. Cool. cool. It's not. <laughs> hashtag lit. God, you're weird. Cool. K-E-W-L. <laughs> We're really basic. We're showing our basic flag right now. Flying our basic flag <laughs> Everyone has mast. been waiting for you to say something from 1990 and you just did it. K-E-W-L. <laughs> <laughs> K-E-W-L. Thank you to everyone who is tweeting me. Amberly funnies because I didn't see Amberly all week and so people were like hashtag it's hump day Sheena and I'm like oh my god you're amazing <laughs> and I confirmed with my Twitter fo- followers you are in fact the only person who still refers to Wednesday as hump day this is why no these people are living no. in the past because Twitter's over <laughs> Twitter's no. not over yeah Twitter's, Twitter's over Twitter's relevant <laughs> no hi, it's not hump yeah, day's is. more relevant than Twitter <laughs> hi Steve <laughs> relevant relevancy okay so um that was a lot of information you guys are probably going to have to listen to this podcast three times to understand it all like Amberly said she is giving a lot of this information through her back to basics nutrition course which, which is available on her website at connection holistic health.com k-i-n-e-c-t-i-o-n holistic health.com and you can always email her if you have any questions or would like a more specific session with her where she can kind of go over individually what's happening but you gave some really good suggestions tonight thanks that i think everyone can use even if you're not having problems Mm -hmm. with your skin yeah lucky you most likely you are having something (laughs) going on right or else you're probably not seeking information from us (laughs) (laughs) there yeah there's that too so are you just interested (laughs) I don't know what I'm saying anymore. So, yeah, I think it's good information for everyone. Definitely share this with a friend that um, that may need some love and light in their self-care practices or maybe you have a friend that is has been looking for a way to heal something and has been given the runaround through the dermatological route or the traditional medical route and nothing is all the creams and steroids and things like that they will work temporarily and then your condition will come back with a vengeance because what is at the core root of the problem is not being addressed and that is factual yeah so I hope that you. this is a healing and enlightening sort of source of information and that you guys can continue to reach out to us if you need any other assistance. But we'll be back soon with some like really, really exciting guests on the podcast. So make sure that you tune in next week as well. Shout out to me on Twitter. <laughs> this is my favorite place ever. Um, Instagram. And if you need anything specific, please feel free to email Amberly or I. Or me. Please feel free to email me. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Me. Not I. Or my Cyclops. (laughs) (laughs) Or my I. My email address is Sheena at RobertPublicJuice.com. And my Instagram and my Twitter is Sheena Manina. S-H-E-E-N-A-M-A-N-N-I-N-A. Love all you 
basic witches and wizards and hoes and Steve. <laughs> <laughs> Adios. <laughs> <laughs> and lots of squares.